Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stacey West YouTube channel. I am Ben, and I am back with Dave Fletcher from Radio Derby. How are you doing, Dave? Are you keeping well, my friend? Yeah, it's not too bad, Ben. Thank you. You? Yeah, you know, doing all right, doing all right. <laughs> yeah, with the last two results in the back pocket and the performances that went along with them, I think it's uh, things are, are looking up a little bit in uh, in LN5 at the moment. So, um, mm. yeah, I mean, let's let's look ahead to to Burton uh, away. Obviously. The home game, we spoke before that, and we we kind of had a, a bit of a discussion about how Burton seemed to be on a bit of an upward tick, you know, a decent, uh, decent run of results. Unfortunately, it was a, a decent result on the day, <laughs> which uh, which led to uh, a 1-0 win for Burton. Then with uh, Danny Mandroyo getting sent off for the first time this season um, for us. But looking, looking, at, looking at results since then, it seems like it might have stalled a little bit. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they had they had two more good results. I think two more good results after the uh, the win at Lincoln, and then went to Carlisle on a Tuesday night, and it all fell apart. Mm. Uh, uh, Quadwell Bar, who had been the sort of catalyst to it all on loan from Watford, virtually unplayable in many matches, picked up another injury at Carlisle. Okay. Um, having been injured at the start of the season, and uh, yeah, it was a downward spiral after that, which ultimately led to. Uh, Dino Marmria's departure from the club. So, um, yeah, Quadro Bar has since departed as well because uh, his current injury isn't going to clear up in time for him to, to play much of a part, apparently. And obviously, he takes up one of the loan uh, one of the loan spots. So, um, yeah, it was it was all right then, uh, and it's all right again now. But in between, it was uh, it was a little bit dicey. Mm. Well, I mean, obviously that was well similarities between the two clubs there. I suppose you know we had uh, the, the game against Burton uh, at home was one that led to, um, I think the straw that broke the camel's back is probably fair to say with with Mark Kennedy um, and sort of hung Danny Mandroyo out to dry after the game and and other issues behind the scenes led to the you know led to his uh, his sacking. So um, I think having you know having seen that and had a little bit of a, a spell of a new manager, it's kind of given, particularly over the last couple of weeks, you know, now that we've been able to get strikers in the building and, and people that can potentially score goals and create chances, um, there's definitely a feeling of uh, positivity. And I think optimism is probably the, the the key word that I've been hearing quite a lot of at Sinsel Bank. I mean, since the managerial change uh, at Burton, have you seen anything uh like that or is it is it still a little bit doom and gloom i can see the grin on your face um a couple of, th couple of things on that the first one is that i actually saw derby county's goalless draw at sinsel bank a couple of weeks mm -hmm. ago and i thought they were fortunate to get away with the point so uh, i know firsthand what uh, uh the, the threat that lincoln will pose burton albion uh at the weekend um, as far as Martin Patterson, Patterson's concerned, it's interesting because Gary Mills came in uh, and struggled a little bit. His first game was down at Oxford and he said, uh, I asked him what his, they were awful, by the way, uh, and I asked him what his uh, overriding emotion was and he said, pride. And I mm -hmm. couldn't quite work it out. But but he, he managed to work it around. He picked up two wins over Christmas that were very unfortunate, I thought, to lose at Bolton. Um but then completely out of the blue, Martin Patterson was appointed as manager and everybody's to go, where on earth has this come from? Because I mean, it's, it's very Ben Robinson, the, the Burton chairman. He appointed Gary Rowett way back when, when he hadn't had a job. Paul Pesky Salido, Nigel Clough hadn't had a managerial job when he was appointed. Um, so it, it, it's not out of character for the club, um, but it was somebody who we, we were scrambling around trying to find stuff about, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and four days after he'd been appointed with two training sessions, they went to Derby and were 2-0 down at half-time and everybody's looking at each other going, oh dear, yeah, nothing's changed. They came back to 2-2, two -two, uh, Joe Hugel scoring on his debut uh, for the Brewers uh, and then rather unfortunately really conceded an injury time goal uh, and yeah. lost. Um, but he went home. I didn't see the game against Charlton 
unfortunately, I think that was the same day that uh, we were at Lincoln um, and won. And then obviously Cambridge last week. And the, the thing the thing that strikes me is, and I had to write it down, they had 34% possession at, uh, at Pride Park, at 28 against Charlton and 29 against Cambridge. I'm not sure how sustainable that amount of possession is between now and the end of the season. And he clearly wants them to get further forward. He talks about a, a no-blame culture, or his players have talked about a no-blame culture, which is helping them to become slightly freer. Um, but they're going to need more than 29% possession in, 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 in matches, especially at home. I don't think home supporters will really stand for that kind of thing. Fortunately, Charlton are, are woeful, aren't they? So um, <laughs> they couldn't do anything with their massive share of the uh, uh, of the possession. And it was the game after that that they yeah. lost at home to Northampton um, that finally saw um, their manager disappear into the distance. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, that's something that, Again, there's a little bit of a parallel there um, between between the two clubs. I mean, we've had instances a lot this season where we've been by far the, the weaker side in terms of possession, but we've been able to come away with results um, for you know for attacking on the counter or soaking up the pressure and just hitting people on the break if we can. Um, have you seen much of maybe that from Burton? Are they, are they a team that is able to to digest all of that pressure. I mean, obviously, you've mentioned the Derby game. That was uh, a game that was on TV. And having seen that and how Derby, I mean, I, I thought Derby were lucky to come away with a, a victory that day. Um, I thought Burton, you know, played pretty well. And I thought Derby, to be fair, they, they looked a little bit weak at the back. Um, and Burton managed to, you know, exploit that and, and get back to two all. Um, so is, is that... Is, is that what we would expect to see on Saturday from Bert? I think he's doing what a lot of managers do when they first take charge, and he's making them hard to beat. Yep. Because, you know, you've got a point. if you if, uh, Successive clean sheets. Mm-hmm. So you've got a point already, and if you can get anything like they did against Charlton, uh, you know, you, you walk away with three. So I think that's how, how he's been sorting it out. Now, it's the top end of the pitch that everybody's interested in. Yep. And for Burton, it's been fascinating because they've let Josh Walker and Josh Gordon and Cole Stockton leave and Bezler Bala refused to play on Saturday and was told, well, you, you might as well go as well. And he's subsequently turned up at Wickham. Um, okay. And Quadwell Barr's gone as well. So f- the five departures so far in this transfer window, um, Walker, Gordon and Stockton are only on loan, but they've gone, mm. have all been forward players. So now he's having to bring forwards in. At, I'd already mentioned um, Joe Hugel, who looks, uh, he's very tall. Um, <laughs> but he, I don't know if that means anything. Um, but he, look, he, looks, he, looks, he looks okay. He looks okay. Mm. He had a little spell on, on loan at Altrincham last season, but this is his first uh, loan spell. He just signed a new contract at Manchester United. He was on the bench in the FA Cup tie against Wigan that was on the tally, and then came to Burton having signed a new contract. Um, uh, Adamola Ola Adabomi has arrived um, from Crystal Palace on loan. It's his first loan spell, mm-hmm. uh, and he made his debut in rather unfortunate circumstances, really, on Saturday because the third of the forward-looking uh, signings so far, Jonathan Lecco, mm-hmm. came on to replace Hugill at half-time uh, and left the field about three minutes later with a knee injury. Uh, the 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 extent of which we're not entirely sure about yet. We'll we'll find that out when we see Martin Patterson. So, so that allowed Ola Adebomi to come on and and make his debut as well. And he he looked all right, but he looked what he is a, a young kid who's done really well for Crystal Palace in the under twenty ones, but mm. isn't used to people pushing him and shoving him, uh, yeah. which is what you'd expect the opposition to do in League One. So yeah. whether or not he can actually get the strikers to score. I'm not. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, he's had a full week this week to prepare for Lincoln, so so that's a huge bonus for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had a full week ahead of the Charlton game as well, but they're, they're about to start a real run of a real run of games that that look like um, well, they're going to be playing every Saturday and Tuesday for a, about three or four weeks. So as anybody yeah. is, so yeah, yeah. That, that that's going to that's going to be the key as to how quickly the, they can get the strikers involved. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, it, it's always the same, isn't it? Whenever the transfer window comes around, unless you are flush with cash, you're you're going to be 
well, pr probably in the market for a striker, and it's always going to be an expensive position to fill, um, which is why we see so many teams making use of the loan market. So, obviously, you, you mentioned there some of the players that have gone out. Um, I think at the time when we spoke before, you, you were quite high on on Barr as a player, um, but you know, with with him going back, does that does that leave a hole? And I, I know when we spoke before um, about the squad, you, you were. Very uh, effusive with your praise for uh, for Mr. Powell there in the in defensive midfield. Oh, yeah, Joe, Joe Powell is is just a, a sensational player for Burton Albion and, and has been since the moment he arrived or since the first moment I saw him. Certainly, he arrived before I started covering them. Um, and he's got Desi Oshilaja in there with him as his sort of minder, going around making sure that uh, if anybody tackles Joe, then uh, they get tackled themselves. So uh, they'll they'll sit in front of a back three. Mm -hmm. At least this is how I think it'll go. Uh, Steve Seddon, <laughs> it was the fifth loanee at Burton Albion, which means that anybody else they bring in, I mean, you can have as many loanees as you want, can't you? We can only have five in a match. Five in a squad, squad, yeah, yeah. So they will be going, as they did last season, in actual fact, that they brought Gassana Hadmi back on dead, right on the right at the death at deadline day. And he didn't really play that much because he was either the sixth or the seventh loanee that was brought to him. Well, it was, it was a bit ridiculous, really. Mm. Um, well, Steve Seddon won't play at the weekend. No, he got sent off on Saturday, didn't he? For the third time this season. Um, yeah, two yellow cards within 30 seconds. The first one for kicking the ball away. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I asked Martin about him. I asked Martin Patterson about him. I don't. I won't speak about individuals. I won't speak about referees. I said, no, but... I'm not, it's not necessarily about the individual or the referee, but his first yellow card was for kicking the ball away. And then he mellowed a bit. He's quite intense, Martin Patterson. He mellowed a bit and said, yes, there'll be a certain amount of education uh, involved. Wow. Yeah, you can't do that. Everybody knows you can't do it. We see it every single match just about nowadays, because it? it's still the player's first reaction to throw the ball away. Yeah. And they pick up a yellow card. Mm. So he might have to change it a bit. I think what it'll mean is that Talaji Bowler, who's on loan from Rotherham, will play on the left-hand side. He came on the right. And he came on in place of Jake Caprice, who was playing right wing back, who is all right going forward, but, but coming back, not so much. And my biggest fear, well, concerning Burton Albion and Saturday's game, clearly, is Draper and especially Taylor mm -hmm. uh, with their pace. Now... It was, it was called the lad up front for, is Kyle Taylor, is it, who plays up front for Cambridge? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, to, for... for Cambridge. I'm going uh, to have to look him up now. Um, he played, Lyle Taylor. Hmm? Lyle, Lyle Taylor. Lyle Taylor, that's the fella. He gave Jasper Moon a terrible time. Uh, and Moon was booked quite early, and it forced him to rejig things a bit. They had to move. Mason Bennett across to the across to the right to stop the wing backs getting foot and all sorts of things and they they, they were they were out thought a little bit in the first half but the pace of Lyle Taylor I'm not sure he's as quick as uh, Lincoln's Taylor having seen him firsthand um, so that's that's the issue that I've got there might be good news on Sam Hughes who hasn't played for a few weeks but the other two centre backs are John Brayford who is brilliant but towards the back end of his career, and Ryan Sweeney, who's been exceptional, but is an old-fashioned head-it-and-kick-it kind of... I mean, blocking the pair of them, absolutely magnificent, but there isn't a lot of pace there, so the, the, that's that's my fear, mm. is that Lincoln would be able to exploit that. I, I'm reasonably confident that uh, Martin Patterson will have watched videos of Lincoln City and spotted that himself. If I can see it, I hope he can. <laughs> um so that that that's the issue at the back, and the issue. So there's issues at the back, although they've kept successive clean sheets, which will have given them massive confidence. And Max Crocombe has been untouchable all season. I mean, he, he was he's been in ridiculous form, ridiculous form. I've got a recall to the New Zealand squad as a result. He's been brilliant, um, but you can't keep calling on your goalkeeper to pull off magnificent saves. No. More than more than three or four a game, anyway. And after that, you, you're thinking, well, he might concede one here. Yeah. No, I mean, look, it's it's. I'm not going to lie; it's slightly um, alien, but very very nice to hear somebody talking about uh, the attacking options that Lincoln have posing a bit of a threat. I mean, 
I, you know, I think when we spoke last, we were at the start of, if not in the middle of our um, injury crisis with with our you know our front players essentially missing in in action completely. Um, obviously, Ben House and, and Tyler Walker are still out of the picture, um, but we do have uh, Joe Taylor and Freddie Draper who've come in um, to well. To, to great aplomb, really. I mean, Freddie Draper uh, coming back from Walsall has, has just been superb, and Joe Taylor has, uh, like you said, you know, all he needed to do on on the well the other week against Derby was not have a fifty p on the end of his boot, and he probably would have uh, would have had, would have had a couple of goals to his name then. Um, I felt quite bad, really, because I did say on X I was presenting rather than commentating, and I said if Taylor had been able to shoot or head the ball, Derby County would have <laughs> lost this game, and and. It was more to make a point as much as anything. Yeah. But yeah, he, I mean, he got into some terrific positions, but mm. didn't make the most of them, did he? And I've seen Draper this season. Uh, he didn't play against Derby, did he? Uh, did yes, he? he did, yeah. Oh, did he? I've seen yeah. him twice. I saw him at Walsall because Walsall played Alfred in the FA Cup, and I'm sure he came on and played in that. So, mm. uh, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think they're great. I think they're they appear from the outside to be really good together. It's obviously they've got to service them, but when you've got the pace that, that Taylor's got, you can almost create something yourself, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he did that against Derby. I think the, the, the second shot that he had that everyone was confident was going to go in, we, you know, he created it from inside his own half and yeah. ran more or less the entire length of the field and made it look very easy, um, I'd say, except for the finish. But um, look, I mean... At this point in the season, um, you know, we're, we're what we're approaching February now. Whereabouts would you be, I suppose, happy with, with Burton finishing in the division? You're looking at 17th at the moment. Is survival the sole aim at the minute, or is it kind of to, to nestle in somewhere in the mid table? I think it's to start looking upwards. Uh, okay. And Saturday would be as good a place as any to start. I think Lincoln are three points better off. Mm -hmm. Than, uh, than Burton at the moment, something like that anyway. And and, and it shows how tight it is. I think I've, I've got the table up here and, and you look down and yes, Reading has started to pick up a few points, but you do worry about Wickham and Port Vale, despite the fact that Wickham have got Bezla Barla and Charlton look hopeless, but they've got a new manager. You worry about the new manager bounce. I'll know more about uh, the problems that Charlton might pose after Saturday when I go and watch them. Um, but then you look forward and they're not far off being top half. So if they could finish middle to top half, Burton Albion, that would be an absolute triumph. I, I don't know if I said it in the last the last time we spoke, but the chairman uh, came and spoke to us on pitch side before the the, the home defeat to Derby County in the uh, in the first game between the two sides at the Pirelli Stadium. Um, and he said, "Look, we're a League Two side, currently in League One, having been in the Championship." Well, I I. And this is no disrespect to Burton Albert, which is a really well-run club. I think they're a non-league side playing in the Football League. They are tiny. Mm. You take the away fans out, you're talking about 2,000 people go and watch regularly. He has tried and tried and tried to increase the size of the crowds, and it just isn't happening. Obviously, they'll come to watch a winning side, so that would help if they started started winning a bit more and playing some uh, perhaps more attractive football. Um but they're they're just they're punching above their weight in League One, mm. no question about it. And I I would just like to see them stay in League One for the time being. Martin Patterson is just making his way in the game. It's his first number one position. Obviously, um, he was with Michael Duff at Barnsley and at Swansea, and he started his coaching career out in America. And he had a very good playing career as well, with twenty odd internationals for Northern Ireland, all the rest of it. Um, but he's just starting out, so it would be nice for him. If he wasn't come the last five games of the season thinking, blimey, we've got to win three of these, otherwise we're in all sorts of trouble. And I don't think it'll come to that, personally. Mm. I think he will sort things out because you can see little incremental... I thought Cambridge were really good. I wasn't expecting them to be quite as good as they were, actually. Um, but they couldn't get through. So if you can go away from home and get a nil-nil draw, the, the fans who go don't really mind that much. They'd perhaps like to see you win occasionally, but it's at home that's important. And that just puts a little bit more pressure on them, although they've already won under Patterson at home against Charlton. Mark Helm, who, who's a lovely little footballer, another former Manchester United player who they signed from Burnley 
in the last January transfer window, I think, uh, was um, was helped by a flick on from Hugh Gill. So he's got himself a goal and an assist in, in his first two matches. So he's settling in nicely. Um, and and the fact that they've already won at home under Patterson doesn't mean that we're, we're all asking the question, well, when are you going to win at home? Mm. Same with Hugel got his goal, so nobody's saying, well, when's he going to score? Well, he's already scored. He's, he's, you know, stuff, just really small stuff like that that helps enormously, doesn't it? In, yeah. in players and management settling in at a new club. And he seems to be settling in quite nicely, the pair of them do. Ah, excellent stuff. Well, look, it's, it's the preview. We, we, always, we always come to the end with um, the obvious question. So uh, let's, let's have your prediction, Dave, uh, for Saturday. I think Burton, uh, chances of getting three clean sheets in a row seem fairly um, unlikely. But the way they're playing, they might just do it. I think they'll win. I think they'll win 2 0 if they can keep your strikers quiet. <laughs> well, it's they might some. Have to, they might have to kick them. <laughs> that's well, what we. I do. I, I do remember that we had a big discussion last time about referees and the standard of refereeing and, and where oh, it was going at the time. So, uh, yeah, we, we we shan't get into that again because we'll be here all night. But um, I'm I'm probably going to go um, the other way, and I'm going to say I'm I'm fairly hopeful and confident of a of a two 0 Lincoln win um, wow. with with the uh, the pace and the power that we have up front now, as you've uh, as you've alluded to. But look. Dave, it is a pleasure as always. You know, thank you for coming back and speaking to us uh, ahead of the game. Um, and yeah, if there's anything around the Pirelli that people that that is welcoming to away fans, is there anything that's um, that, that's about or the away fans pub is on the way in as you come off the A38 on the right hand side before you get to the Pirelli. That that's very welcoming to away supporters. They've got an outside bar as well. If the weather's nice, that's quite pleasant. And they do have a, a family fun area over on the um, the AstroTurf pitch at the back of the uh, at the back of the ground and beyond the car park. If you know what I mean. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not. I think that's probably more geared up towards uh, home supporters. I usually have a couple of players in there, but uh, yeah. I'm sure you'll have a terrific time if you come along. Uh, I, I know I've got my detractors at Lincoln. I, I think we spoke about them last time. I, I mean, I mean no harm. I, I just, I just like a laugh, really. So. Uh, yeah, no, but, I won't be, but, but I won't be there, so you don't have to put up with me. <laughs> I was going to say, it's it's very much appreciated you coming back on, Dave. You're more than welcome to uh, to share your insight whenever. And uh, until the next time, up the imps. Cheers, Ben. <laughs>